Welcome to Flipping English. Uh, today we're going to be looking at camera shots and camera angles, and specifically how camera shots and camera angles can be used to convey meaning to an audience. Um, now, we're going to be looking at some technical rules. Now, these technical rules are uh, very like writing. You need to know them if you're going to be easily understood. And that's, look, the two, two rules of, uh, of, of creating these stories, whether it's uh, in writing or whether it's uh, in a visual medium, is that the, the message, the story needs to be easily understood and it needs to be interesting. Um, so th these rules are really fundamental to that. So in writing, you've got the example of when to use punctuation or, or, the, or how to write a sentence, the, the subject, verb and object. Um, and we're going to be talking with using some technical language um, in regards to film specifically. However, um, it's important to note also that uh, this also relates to still images such as photography. Um, so yes, we're going to learn the rules so that you know them, so then you know when you should break them. And that's when it starts getting really interesting. So let's get into it. Giddy up. A camera shot is the amount of space that can be seen in a shot or a frame. Um, and look, it's used to um, convey or establish setting, um, information about the characters, um, or, or about general themes. And we're going to be looking at, at a few of those different types of shots right now. The first shot we're going to consider is the extreme long shot. These shots are often used at the start of a scene to establish the setting. They provide the viewer with information about where the action in the scene is going to take place. Our example shot is taken from the start of Toy Story 3. The information that we're being provided is the setting, which is a desert. Importantly for the story, there is a train travelling from left to right on the screen. The next shot we're going to look at is the long shot. Again, the long shot contains some landscape. However, it is a more specific shot um, and includes information about where the action will take place. In our Toy Story 3 example of a long shot, the viewer now understands that the train is where the action is going to happen. In the transition from the extreme long shot to the long shot, we can see one of the important rules of filmmaking for clearly conveying the story, and that's that movement must match um, or must be matched between the cuts. In both these shots, the train is moving from left to right. Therefore, the two shots make sense together. Um, if you had one shot where the train was moving from right to left and then the other, the train was moving from left to right, the viewer would be left not knowing what was happening with the train. Um, and we'll be looking at this rule and other rules in greater depth later on. The next shot we're going to look at is a full shot, which shows a complete view of the characters. This reveals to the viewer what the characters are wearing and also through their body language, the relationship that exists between the characters. Um, in our example, we're int introduced to the two outlaws, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. The viewer knows the characters are outlaws as they are wearing eye patches, hoop earrings and head scarves. And Mrs. Potato Head is sporting a pair of nunchuckers, which generally isn't the weapon of the hero. For our next shot, we're going to look at a mid shot, which contains the characters um, or a character from waist up. From this shot, viewers can see the characters' faces more clearly as well as their interaction with other characters. This is also known as a social shot. In our example, Woody has a paternal hand on Rex's shoulder, whilst Rex looks eagerly at Woody for validation. The next shot we're going to look up is a close-up, um, which contains just one character's face. This enables viewers to understand the actor's emotion and also allows them to feel empathy for the character. This is also known as a personal shot. In this example, the shot cuts off Woody's body just below the chest. The generally accepted heights for these cutoffs are the knees, hips, just below the chest and the armpits. The next shot we're going to look up is an extreme close-up, which contains one part of a character's face or other object. The closeness of the shot emphasises the importance of the object or action that is occurring. This technique is quite common in horror films. Um, the type of shot creates an intense mood and provides interaction between the audience and a viewer. In our shot that we use, the, the extreme close-up makes it clear what's happening to Buzz, um, where he's been switched from, uh, from normal to demo. The next shot we're going to look at is the over-the-shoulder shot. Um, now this shot is framed behind a person, 
who is looking at the subject. The person facing the subject should usually occupy about a third of the frame. Now, I mean, look, generally you can cut the, the, the frame into thirds. This shot helps to establish the position of each person and get the feel of looking at one person from the other's point of view. It's common to cut between these shots during a conversation, which alternates the view between the different speakers. It's really important to know that there is a very big difference between camera shots and camera angles. Uh, camera angles are used to position the, the viewer so that they can understand the relationship that exists between the characters. Um, and uh, obviously, again, really important for conveying the, the meaning of the, the actual text. Now look, again, this doesn't just relate to, uh, to films. This is any visual text uh, um, incorporates this use of angles. Um, and we're going to have a look at some of those different angles now. The first angle we're going to look at is a bird's eye angle, which is an angle that looks directly down upon a scene. This angle is often used as an establishing angle, along with this extreme long shot, and again used to establish setting. The next angle we're going to look at is a high angle. A high angle is a camera angle that looks down upon a subject. A character shot with a high angle will look vulnerable or small. These angles are often used to demonstrate to the audience a perspective of a particular character. The next angle we're going to consider is an eye level angle, which puts the audience on an equal footing with the character or characters. This is the most commonly used angle in most films, as it allows the viewers to feel comfortable with the characters. Next, we're going to consider the low angle which is a camera angle that looks up at a character. This is the opposite of a high angle and makes the character look more powerful. This can make the audience feel vulnerable and small by looking up at the character. This can help the responder feel empathy if they are viewing the frame from another character's point of view. Um, the final angle we're going to look at is a bit of a weird angle. It's called a Dutch angle. Uh, a Dutch angle is often used to demonstrate the confusion of a character. Uh, it's a shot on an angle or a slant. In this example um, shot, the lighting and angle work together to convey a sense of, of danger um, as the toys are, are looking to escape. So there we are. Uh, camera shots and camera angles. Um, look, go, have we missed any? Um, get in contact with us if, if, you, if you feel like we have. Um, that is a very, very kind of uh, tip of the iceberg kind of overview. Um, look, I'd encourage you to go out and do things like uh, put on your favourite movie or favourite television show um, and turn the sound down. Look at the different ways that the, the, the author is um, using these camera shots and camera angles to create meaning. Um, and it also give really... Uh, teach you about the cuts that they're making as well and how they link those different shots together and look that's something that we'll talk about a little bit more later on um, but there's lots of ways that you can do that to try and keep generally try and keep things nice and smooth um, or sometimes if you really want to emphasize something again you break the rules and maybe do a jump cut um, but again that's something that we'll talk about another day so look if you enjoyed subscribe particularly if you're one of our students uh, make sure you subscribe and you find out more stuff about more about film and uh, in English in general. Look, I hope you enjoyed it. Talk soon. And as the years go by, a friendship will never die. You're gonna see us our destiny. You got a friend.